Okay, there's a small update really to go on here. I've done quite a bit um, which I haven't filmed due to various problems. Um, but anyway, what we've actually done, we've got the black on the top here, which we're just about to unmask, which we can do now. Now that's just standard flat black masked up. And as I say, we followed the instructions to the letter of where it actually goes. So we're just gonna carefully unmask this. And we should go around something like that. And hopefully we're gonna come up with a very nice very sharp edged um, bit of masking there. Now the trick with this is, so you follow the canopy line, is to lift it slightly, put the tape in, push it down, and then push it back down. That way the canopy is absolutely perfectly done. Okay, so now we'll do the, uh, the other moment of truth, if we can. We'll just get the nose undone. Okay. And then this should really bring us our um, Felix looking Tomcat to life. And there we go. There's the, the black nose that we know so well. Now it's looking a little bit blue at the moment, but I think a lot of that is to do with the light of um, the actual obviously the daytime light and the lights we've got here, because it really isn't quite that blue. It's more gray than certainly blue. The other thing you might have noticed actually on the top here by looking, did a little bit of weathering. All I actually did was have that top gray color we had added um, one drop of black, quite a bit of thinners, and just randomly ran around everywhere just putting it in to so just give it that depth and it's that depth we're talking about. Okay, so what we've got to do now is really we need to get a future coat on this and to protect the paintwork and that could be drying already for starting um, for decaling and things like that anyway. Um, the other thing we need to do is all the silver work which we're going to do on the leading edges of the wings, the air intakes under here, down under here and then obviously uh, we've got the vents at the top and the gun barrel and with that we're going to use them out. So okay, what we're doing now is spraying the owl clad on low air pressure straight from the bottle and we're actually using um, a raw steel I think on this one yep this is steel and um, the reason I like the steel it's got a nice darker silver to it use the stainless steel it's obviously a little bit lighter so we'll just dry that one off we're almost running out of air now now I've already done the gun bay just here that one's done and in so now we're just going to do these vents for these holes on the top here because they're done them as well and obviously we can always darken them down at a later date or whatever you want to do we're not committed at this point to exactly how it's all going to look because we can weather it up obviously with some post pre-shading and various bits like that okay that's those done now so all we've got now is whilst those bits are just drying off we can then mask up and get these intake lips done as well okay so that's all the alclad work done so what we can do now is have a quick unmask which is always the fun bit and see exactly what we've got so we just whip these bits all off here and we'll have a look at first of all the gun vent which is always a quite a, a nice one to do because it always shows up well against the black and then obviously against the, the grey as well but there we go that's the gun vent done there so if you can see that there it very nicely came out very very well and obviously you can just Pull all this off quickly. And there's the vents done as well. See the glisten there quite nicely. Okay, so there we go. We've just sprayed the, um, I don't know what their technical name is to be honest, but I call them bags. Um, these are, um, if I just bring this over here and show you. Um, these parts here, basically what happens is they fit in here. Yeah, they'll go in inside there like that. Now these are actually inflatable big bags if you like, obviously they're very very strong, but when the wings sweep back, when they're swept and fully back and things like that, obviously the bags, of, you know, the air comes out of them, but obviously when it's swept forwards, they inflate to fill up the void behind, so there's no gaps obviously when the airflow is going down and going back in and that. So that's the idea behind it. Obviously it must work well, um, because as I say, I don't know of any other aircraft that has a bag system quite like that, but certainly it's pretty much unique to the Tomcat. So there we go, that's those done. Now I've actually sprayed those um, with the dark ghost grey, because we're still doing this thing of just trying to blend it all in and make it all look nice. Um, you might see down here on the desk as well, I've painted the chrome areas um, for the shock absorbers on the actual undercarriage. Got a quite a big one going on on that one there. So it's just to do those little bits as we go. Also, in a moment, we're gonna mask up these exhausts. Um, we're just gonna 
completely cover it and then we're going to spray the inner bit black um, obviously so it marries up so when it sits on with the actual um, aircraft itself those are done black okay we've got those bags actually in position there now and um, obviously we take them just to hold them down so they were trying to lift up now the other thing we can do now is get these engine exhausts on now obviously we sprayed the black bit and we've done i've owl cladded the end or that you could use any type of titanium type silver now normally they have little black areas for carbon fiber and those obviously you know bite in and out we're going to use decals on this one which i'll show you afterwards but that will come when it's decaling so what we're going to do now is just slide these in and they should literally just push in just like that looking good and then you can come along with your extra thin and just tap and let the capillary action zip in and work its way round. Okay, and that's it. And then you can lift it slightly or how you need to position it to make sure it's all square. And if you put your finger underneath the bottom, obviously if you don't use too much glue, because if you stick your finger there, you're gonna get it everywhere. But it will give you your reference, and as long as it's good on the top and it feels smooth on the bottom, we'll have a quick look. Yeah, we're looking good there. Just hold it for a few moments and then it will dry and it'll be able to hold its own weight and then you can come along with some more glue and give it another glue. Okay, so there we go, exhaust on, certainly brings it to life at that back end for certain. Um, we're all done now, so what we're gonna do is give this two coats of future, neat, um, medium air pressure, 25, 30 PSI, all the way over, and obviously we're gonna do wings, bits and pieces and everything, all as separates, and then once that's dry, we're gonna let that dry for a couple of hours and then we can crack on and get those fantastic decals all Okay, way. so I hope you can see here, the um, decaling's going well. It's certainly turning into pencil one. We're getting feel it's going. Um, obviously we've got the tails going on here as well. Now, lots of micro set and sold to get those on because we really need them to conform. And obviously they get really wrinkly and horrible when you get little bubbles and you have to go around. And what I'm using is my pin from my needle vise um, that I do my scribing with and just giving it a dot round and then it goes. Same thing, if you get any silvering around, just give it a couple of dots round, another little brush over with your micro sole, your actual, your red one, and that'll take care of any silvering you get. Now, one little thing I hope you can see here, i bring it in. You can see these great work I've done on these um, engines here, um, painting them up. Right, all I did, they're owl clad, and then what I've actually done is I've cheated because those black areas are actually decals. Now, this is one of those things, and I'm hoping the um, afterburner decals are gonna do what I'm about to ask them and bring out a sheet for all the engines. This one here is out of their um, F14 sheet, and all it is, is decals just like so and then you go along and literally you just put them on as you would and they look fantastic and if we can get some carbon fiber ones done as well and things like that I think it will just make doing engines and painting up and things like that an absolute pleasure so I'm going to carry on and get this all finished off now and then we're going to let it all dry check for silvering and then we can actually get a couple of coats of future over and all on for weathering okay so that's the decaling over certainly coming to life as you can see um, obviously it's all in uh, various stages everywhere um, but the wings they're done as well they're decaled and sorted out as is everything else the only thing we're waiting on if you like um, is these tails now if I zoom you in you can see what we're doing now this is one of those things the more and more it takes but as you can see it's a little bit wrinkly perhaps in the light now the thing is that's been drying and you can see like big crack lines fault lines coming off of it catch it in the light there now what that is, is obviously where the, this air got underneath and it's shrinking back and things like that. So it's gonna take a lot to get those in. So it's one of those things, take your time, patience, keep going over it with microsol, any air bubbles and silver, and give them a little um, prick with a pin or run a little very sharp knife just in little areas, little slits to let that air out and help them weld in. It's just a case of time. If you hurry up now and put other decals on top of that, you're not gonna get on with it. Obviously they need to have some more decals on yet. So we're just gonna persevere, take our time, have a break from it, put some on, come back to it, put some more on, come back to it, and do it like that just until it's right. Okay, so we're still having some troubles um, with these decals here, if you see there, but we've still got some um, wrinkles and things still to go out. What I've done now, sharp, very sharp blade, snapped off a new piece, slit it all the way down, another coat on there. This is the 10th coat just gone on now, so you know who knows how that's gonna work. Now, so one coat of future on here, um, and everything's, Tickety boo, we've got no silvering that I can see anywhere at all. So what we're gonna do now is give it its final coat of future, which will be neat, straight out of the bottle, and um, about 30 PSI all over. We do the wings, the fuel tank, we're gonna leave the tails and see how they progress. But for the rest of it, we can certainly move on. Okay, so the future has now been drying absolutely everywhere. Um, it's all completely rock hard. It's been drying now for 24 hours, and it's quite a warm day yesterday, so we've got no real worries. So what actually we're gonna do next is give it a wash. Now you've seen me do this a million times before, just going to use the Pro Modeler's dark wash right the way over absolutely everything. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with that one. As I say, I've done it 100 times before. So I'm gonna put the wash on now and then I'm gonna take it off and then we can do a little bit more weather into it. Okay, so the Tomcat is all now dry now. The wash is dry, so we can get that off in a moment. Now what we wanna also do is obviously the red area um, around the doors of naval aircraft. Now if I bring you in a little bit, you can see this a bit better. Um, so obviously, where are we at? There we go. You see you get the red lip so they can see if they're open. Now basically all that is, is a little bit of flat red. Um, in this case, we use some Tamiya XF7. So if we just move that out of the way. And then all we do, you take a nice um, thin brush. Okay, got some quite watery stuff in here, down here in the pot. Then all we do, obviously I'm doing this backwards, so look out. If we just move, make some room. Okay, so here we have, we have it like this, and all we'll do is run our brush down, and then from the other side, you just wipe off. And obviously I'm doing this backwards, and I've already made one small mistake, because I'm normally doing it the other way around. But there we go, we just run it down with your brush. Little one there to do. Just like that, and then that gives you your red lip as it goes down then obviously on the other side as soon as it's there because it's acrylic you just wipe it off with your finger as you go along so this is how we do our little red edging as i say if you make it too wet it tends to flow a little bit too fast but as long as you do it um, nice and slowly take your time and then sometimes if it's a little bit too thin you can go around and give it a second coat but it's quite straightforward and that's the best way to do it so i've done all the others um, and I've just got this one to do as well, um, which is quite a, a tricky one. So all we'll do, we're gonna run our red down like that. And as you see, we've got a little bit on the outside. So all we do, I know I've got that thing there, we just wipe it off with our finger. So we need that bit of blue tank, like that, like so, so it's gone. So obviously we've got our red, but none on the outside just like that. And then obviously we can do down the sides. The okay, same. so that's the wash all off now. So you can see the panel lines and various bits and pieces. Now obviously, um, being this is, is Felix, we're not gonna go to totally to town on the weathering. I wanna keep it somewhat authentic. So as you can see, it's a little bit blotchy, but we're gonna go around when it's all together and do some post shading anyway. Now the other thing I did, obviously we washed out these um, the undercarriage. Now I did it, sometimes I do it with um, some Tamiya smoke thinned down, but because I wanted this to stand out, and obviously no matter how good the aircraft is, normally the undercarriage on Navy Birds tends to be a bit of a mess. So I use the wash for it instead of doing it the normal way. Now the beauty with these is, no having to paint tricky tires, because they actually have these lovely little, whoops, I'll just bring you in a minute. Zoom you in, 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 in. They actually have these um, lovely little rubber tyres which fit just over the top, just like that. Now the trouble with tyres, it's very hard to get the weight on wheel effect because it's rubber. So you can cut the bottom, but obviously it's very difficult because it is rubber um, by its nature. But with these, literally, they just push on straight over the top and give you a great looking wheel just like that. And the same for the fronts. Now, um, as I say, if you're gonna get replacement undercarriages, you can get different wheels for it because some people have concerns about obviously the rubber deteriorating. Now this type is what we call the solid rubber tire. Those in my case, I've never known them to deteriorate. The only ones sometimes you do get with kits, they're hollow. So when they do sit down and because they're hollow, they actually sink and give that weight on wheels effect. Now I know for a fact that those over um, short periods of time can deteriorate and then obviously they crumble and you're gonna to have to find some type of a replacement, but that's not too much of a problem because if it does go after sort of five, 10 years, you can always buy yourself a set of resin ones, pop them on and away you go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is basically bring all this together. Now, um, we're into that final stage, if you like, of actually doing it now. There's no golden rule for doing this. Um, obviously, you could do it now, is uh, pop the undercarriage on, get the doors on, then get the wings on, and then tail, all the other bits and pieces. So really, it's your own personal preference of the way you want to do it. Um, obviously, I'm gonna do the gun bay. It's all covered up here, but I'm actually gonna open that up and I'm gonna paint the gun bay up. The boarding ladder we're gonna have down, we're gonna have the cockpit open, various bits and pieces. The only other thing to mention at this point, sometimes you get, if you can see in here, um, those little dark marks down there. Now, if you take a, a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it and you just wiggle it in, you can actually 
get the wash out of that little crack, the little fault line in there, like so. And then just keep on brushing it all out. Now there's two ways, you could either pop down there, obviously with a bit of clean uh, gray paint and paint over it, but there we go, as you see, it's gone now. Um, and that's quite a, an effective way of actually getting rid of those things. But what it is, sometimes where you get a weld join um, in your plastic, the wash sinks in there and it's a little uneven surface. Obviously it's hard to get the wash out, the wash doesn't want to come out and it does that. Um, I don't know if you can see there as well, the wheel wells, we've used the wash as well. As I say, I wanted it very dirty. Um, so that's why I've done that. So what we're gonna do now is just basically, um, I'm gonna get the wings on and fitted and glued. Um, that's gonna be quite a straightforward job. Um, obviously these are all washed and dried and everything as well. So what we're gonna do is look for the slip. Okay, and that's gonna sit in obviously like this. And I'm gonna glue it in position so it's hard because I don't want it actually moving. Um, when the wings are in a totally folded back position, they go a little bit further than it does in flight, um, that it overlaps the actual tail itself somewhat like that so they're really the same type of distance the way it actually happens so don't think it sort of sits just the same as the wing because obviously that's when it's flying when it's in stowed it comes back a little bit more there again check your references just to make sure you get it so right. as you can see we've got the undercarriage on um, literally it's just tacked in place with super glue then afterwards I'm going to go around and actually do it proper and we haven't got all the little bars and the holders that hold it all in place yet so we're going to get those on in a moment the wings are fixed in place so is the tail planes we've got little bits of cleanup to do for just everywhere but that's part of the thing and um, what we're going to do in a moment we're going to get all those little bits attached to the undercarriage and then we're going to get the doors all fitted on there as well and then we can get these drop tanks um, fitted on there as well so they can actually sit there and all done the tails we're still having trouble but it's about as far as we can go with those so we're going to have to bite the bullet and we're going to get them fitted on as well and then after that we can do a little bit of post shading and a little bit more weathering so okay, as you can see there, we've got the gear on, we've got the doors on and everything else. So underneath we're all okay. Also I've put on is the antennas at the top here. So they're on there ready to go. Just about to fix the tails on. And then what we can do is the fuel tanks and the other bits and pieces later. Now, if I just move this very, very carefully because the undercarriage is still wet. If I just bring you in here, this here is the boarding ladder. Um, this is the back part here, the gray part, which was obviously attached to the Tomcat itself. And then it's two photo etch strips, and then you're gonna get four, but you only use three, just in case you lose one of the actual steps. And then you just super glue the lot together. Now getting it all to line up is quite tricky. So what I tend to do is I tend to do it roughly, and then I'll bend it into shape once it's actually set. But that's your basically gist. And what we're gonna do is spray that white in a minute, and then we do the edges red as it is, and then we can fix it to the actual um, aircraft itself. Okay, so now we're to the point where we're quite happy with it. We've done all those areas. We're sure that there's nothing else really needs doing or taking care of. So what we can actually do now is put a flat coat on over the top. Now, some of you have had trouble with this. I'm using the extra acrylics one. It's had a good shake and then let it stand just like that for a few minutes. Can we just get the old compressor going? Okay, usual thing. Make sure your acrylic thinners goes in first. Okay. And in there I put in, or will be, about one mil. I'll probably, actually forget that, there's probably about a mil and a half in there. Give it a little bit of a blow through so it's entered the chamber. And then we're gonna pour in the equal amount again, so it's like a 50-50. And when you pour it, pour it quite slow and look for big lumps. If you get a big lump, go flop in there, so to speak, then tip it back out. Next thing, obviously doing this, is to make sure it's got a good stir. Now the thing is you could use a cocktail stick like I've done there or a paint stirrer but what I prefer to do is get a brush, just get any brush you've got, but preferably a soft one and give it a good brush because what will happen is it will get down to that needle area and all your lumps that you would get would be down in there and give it a very good mix. Now with a brush obviously it will break down any lumps, bumps and bits and pieces because if those lumps and bumps and bits and pieces get down to your actual needle it's going to then spit those parts actually out. So we just check our blow, which we're happy with. Okay, then we're just gonna pop our flat coat right over the top. Quite a heavy coat. Okay, I'm still doing this a bit back to front so you can see. I can see roughly what we're getting at here. Okay, nice light coat, just like that to start with. Okay, then ease off, set your thing, it'll be all right for a minute, and just let that start to dry. 
and then once that's actually dried off you can flip it over do the underside and then what you can do is move further away with your airbrush and increase the pressure this means it'll be drying by the time it gets to it and will give you a flatter finish the closer you are the heavier coat you put on it'll be more of a satin finish even if it says flat coat on there obviously there's varying degrees of it now we've used a thinner in there because it's a very warm day so there's no way this would actually spray neat but on a cold day you can put that straight into your airbrush neat and spray it but you are going to have to have your air pressure up 35 psi plus to be able to get rid of it. Okay so as you can see we're basically we're getting there now the flat coat is completely dried um, and we're all handleable now so we're looking basically like this so we've got a few things still to do we've got the lights to go on obviously we've got to unmask finish the little details in the cockpit area things like that boarding ladder now is all dry and all done but obviously because it's so fragile um, we don't want it falling off quite yet so we're going to leave that to one side so what we can actually do the other thing is down here do you remember we've got this gum bay you know are we going to do something with it at the moment it's closed up but we can open it up have a look and make a decision and obviously we can just paint it up which is something i'll probably do as well then that way there is the option you can have it with a gun or not so what we're going to do is very carefully for the first time have a look down in the cockpit area just to see how much overspray and bits and pieces we've all got in there. Now, if you ever get the bit where, you know, obviously you get bits of blue tack when you pull it out left behind, just give it a dab and it will lift itself all off and things like that. Now, there is a little bit of overspray around there. Other thing, if you just take your, your actual um, putty itself and as long as it's sticky, just give it a little rub and you'll lift off like a very fine sandpaper, just the tops of any overspray you've got. Obviously, you're not going to get rid of tons of it, but it will just makes a little difference any bits like that so there we go that's that done and then what's going to happen we'll just clean this up a bit we've got the part that goes in the middle the dark part here i'll just move the don't get out of the way we've got this dark part here now what's going to happen is obviously this fits into the inside on here and then in the kit you get a photo etch which i've already put in which i'll just bring you in um, which is this part here which you might be able to see and you've got the little teeth on there that shows now we can dry brush that just to bring that to life give it a little bit more depth and then obviously that's just going to straightforward it's going to sit um, straight in there like that so it will give you that nice bit of depth and obviously you've got the anti-foggers and the bits and pieces all along there um, which is quite a nice touch so we can get that glued in and obviously for that we we'll use some gator glue or your PVA glue um, at the same time um, we've got the lights which obviously go on the Tomcat top and bottom here they go on the tails I've already pre-painted these so they're dry and can be handleable now the thing is make sure you get them the right way round because they have, there's slight differences with them if you put them in and it feels all lumpy chances are I've got the one on the bottom on the top and vice versa so just remember those and then you make sure you get them in the right way so that can be done as well the other little thing we can do sorry on the canopy here two choices obviously because we've got the photo etch set we've got photo etch mirrors and obviously the one that came with the kit as well now there's two ways of doing this um, basically you can either try and bend it completely to a nice sort of horseshoe shape and fit it or what I tend to do is cheat snip out just a little bit each side of the mirror okay then bend it and just use that tab to stick it on and that way you don't have to get the perfect mold and bend and obviously it's quite tricky to do that so it's a way of cheating but it works well so that's that bit done and then obviously we've got antennas aerials and bits and pieces so i'm going to get all those bits on okay so i don't know if you can see here but we've got these little white marks if i move it in the light you see we've got another one here um probably going to be a bit hard for you to see because of glare and various bits and pieces but i'll stick my finger in it um you can make them out but there we go we've got this one here so if you use a cocktail stick and you come along and then literally all you do is put it on the side and just give it a little scrape and just work your way down a little bit you'll get rid of it just like that and so we've got this one back here and all it is is a tiniest bit of overspray just got it under the tape and it usually happens where you get a little wrinkle you know where you're trying to wrinkle it around but if you do it like that and just scrape it away with a cocktail stick you're fine and good to go now obviously you can polish up your canopy now or anything you still need to do if you've got any bits on there but to give us a, a rough look of see how we're going with the tomcat now really we've got all the lights on now 
and obviously I've unmasked the cockpit so that bit's done as well. Weapons fit, I'll do that for the, fo for the photos later. Coming up shortly I'm going to do a little um, probably half hour special on painting and weathering weapons and decaling weapons because it's quite technical to go through. So what we're going to do, we're going to get this bit stuck in here, finish off the cockpit, get the seats in and then we're going to get all the little bits and pieces all over it all done. Okay, so one of the <coughs> little areas you get on modern aircraft is obviously the front panel looks a different colour to the rest of it, and actually it is. What actually happens is the front windscreen is normally laminated a lot more. So certainly for flat panel aircraft, obviously we're thinking of intruders, corsairs, things like that, um, sort of 60s, 70s, 80s jets, they had flat panels, not curved like the modern ones, so obviously then they had extra protection from bird strike and things like that, because obviously, you know, something hits that at 450 knots, you're really going to know about it. The downside to it, when you look at it, obviously with the lamination of all the glass, you get a tint. Now, depending obviously on lighting conditions and various bits and things, it's all a variable. There's no real color you'll see. And it could be anything from looking blue to green. I tend to use a green. So what I've got is just some clear green X25 Tamiya. And it's an old pot. So what we do, we've got this one here. So we just get an upturned, um, uh, an upturned pot like that. Right, we're gonna take a couple of drops of thinners quite a few in there like that okay then we're going to add some green paint into that thinners just to thin it down and to make it a nice watery green because what we're going to do is paint this onto the clear glass and give us that green hue to the clear part so if you give it a good mix because you don't want any lumps and then the next thing you need to do is literally angle the, this up because obviously if you put it on the top it's all just going to run to the bottom and you're going to end up with a pull down the bottom So we're going to stick it on something like that. Let me just bring you out a moment. And all we're going to do is hit start on the top, okay? And we're just going to let it run all over that panel. And you want to flood the center section, if you like, of it. Now make sure you haven't got any bits or any bits of nasties, dust, hairs, whatever, as we've got here. I've got a few, it's just where the actuator cloth didn't think. Now it's not going to take long to dry because it's thin, so what you do, you get another bit and just give it a dab in the middle and just let it sort of work its way all around, okay, and then just mix it, blend it in with the sides, pull it in from the top, okay, and when you're happy that you're all there, then just leave it. Now that green hue will stay there then, and off you go. Now I know it's a bit tricky for you to see, if we just perhaps try and bring you in a bit. All right, if we zoom in. As you can see there, now we've got that sort of green hue to it. Now what you could do, you could come back with some blue and add a little bit of blue to it as well. Um, you can come back to it and obviously add all these different little colors. As long as it's in the clear range, um, you'll be okay. Obviously don't use a normal green because it's gonna come back as flat and it'll bite you. So we don't wanna do that. So you need that to totally dry. Don't touch it, don't go anywhere near it. And certainly don't let that nose section go flat. You want it on the horizontal. Um, so obviously it just sits. Otherwise, as I say, if you've got it normal, it's just gonna to flow to the bottom. It's gonna to stick to the bottom. It is gonna pull around the edges a little bit more, but really you're not gonna see anything. So I really won't worry about it. So that's that done. We can leave that now to dry. Uh, quite extensively. You might see from that shot here on the side, we've got all the aerials in. Um, I've got the parts are drying now. Obviously we've put the, the canopy part in there now, so we're just waiting for that to dry, but we're almost there. Okay, so there we go. All done, all finished. Painted up the gun bay um, down here. You can see it down there, underneath the front there. Uh, that's all done. Simply just a bit of blank and then went around there with just the dark wash to give it a wipe around. Now I haven't gone totally um, over the top on the weathering. Two reasons really. One, having a look at Felix, she was kept pretty pristine condition. Um, and I wanted to sort of keep that theme going. Also, I've just seen a video of her when she's been dismantled for the museum and there again, she was spotless. So I'm trying to keep it that theme. It would have been very easy to go on and plaster it for weathering and everything else. But seeing as it was the last Tomcat, on the last Tomcat cruise as well, I thought I would serve its memory quite nicely with trying to keep it really how it is. Fault-wise, um, to be honest, there is a couple of faults on it. As you might be aware, my mind's been elsewhere this week. Um, as I say, I've got a tiny little line down here, which is one of those things where you have to look to see it, but I know it's there. And the decals, they're a lot better than they were, trust me. These back ones, they were very, very brittle, I think. Even with Microset and Sol, they took a lot of work to get on there. 
cockpit came out lovely, everything else really works fine. Um, I've got a lantern pod on the side here at my weapon spare box, and also I've got a couple of racks on the bottom for bombs, so at a later date if I wanted to, I could arm it with JDAM or something similar. Um, really, quite a complicated kit. Obviously I've showed you how to get it together and everything else, um, but your main thing really is test fitting. This is one of those kits which doesn't just fall together and really is going to need a little bit of time um, to get it to you know, really come to, to life and to work. Um, but there again, if you take your time, get the test fitting, make sure it's all right, then get the glue out. If you're going to do it in that order, really you won't come into many problems. It is Hasegawa. It's very good quality. The engraving on the panel lining and the way and having rubber wheels really, really does help. It really does help and bring it to life. As you say, I didn't end up gluing the wings because I thought it'd be quite nice to have them out, in and out um, after all. Um, so that's that type of thing. The other thing also I did different on this one as I showed you is these decals um, for the actual areas on the exhaust save a lot, a lot of time. So that's the other thing. But apart from that, really, really enjoyed it. It was a lovely build to do. Um, I hope I've really showed you the best way to get the best out of the kit. And if you enjoyed it that much, then join me next time.